When you're setting your CNC router bits up to carve a project, one of the important things that you have to take into account is something called step over. In this video, I'm going to explain to you exactly what step over is and why it's so important to pay attention to. IDCwoodcraft.com when your CNC router bit is cutting, feeds and speeds are very important. You already know that as a CNC creator. Sometimes people don't really understand the nuances of step over of the router bit as it's making us cut. So first I'm gonna to explain to you what exactly step over is, then I'm gonna give you a demonstration of it, and then we're gonna talk about step over a little bit more. So step over is when your CNC router bit makes a pass through the material, it has to move over and come back. And so that percentage of move over is the step over. So let's show you what step over is. So let's start off with the example of a one inch surfacing bit. This is one inch in diameter. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna blow this bit up to this size, 10 inches right there. And on the other side of this little circle, I have it segmented into percentage segments, so every segment is 10%. So when your CNC bit comes into your project and starts to carve, it's gonna plunge down into the material and it's going to start cutting the material. And it's gonna be cutting the full or half the diameter as it makes this cut. So it's coming over across the material, making its initial cut, and then it's going to do a step over. And that step over is a percentage or a distance of the entire diameter of the tool. So if we are doing a 10% step over, or in this case, a 0.1 of an inch step over, then what that CNC bit is going to do after it makes this start or initial pass, it's gonna move over that 10% or 0.1 of an inch, and it's gonna start coming back and removing material, just like that. And then when it comes back, it is going to come back and do the next 10%. So finish that one strip, come over 10% and start removing another 10%. And it's gonna go back and forth and do that for every pass for a 10% step over. But what if we want a bigger step over, say 50%. Now the router bit is gonna move over this half, half that distance or 50% of that distance. So it would come over in its first cut and then make its step over 50%. This is the last edge of cut and then it's gonna start coming back and cutting, oh, got hung up here, there we go. It's gonna start cutting 50% of that material. So that is technically what step over is. So that makes sense with a one inch diameter tool. 10% step over is 0.1 of an inch. But what if you have something like a quarter inch diameter tool? What is 10% of that? Well, you take the quarter inch and you divide that by 10 and that would be your step over. 50% step over for a quarter inch diameter tool would be an eighth of an inch. So for every diameter tool that you have, the step over percentage is gonna be based on that diameter where you divide that by the amount of percentage or 10% of that tool diameter is basically gonna be whatever it's gonna be when you do your math. If that doesn't make sense, think of it like cutting your lawn. So here I am cutting my lawn and I'm making my first cut. Now I'm only cutting half the width of the mower blades. That's a 50% step over. If I wanna do an 80% step over, now I am doing 80% of the width of the blades. Or if I wanna do a 10% step over and be really inefficient and in cutting my lawn, then I'm only trimming just a little bit of the edge of the blades and that's not very efficient. So here's the relevance to step over when you're working with smaller step overs and larger step overs. Number one is the tool marks that are left behind when the router bit is making us cut. A small step over is gonna leave very faint tool marks, if any tool marks at all, on the bottom of the cut. Whereas large step overs tend to leave tool marks along the edge of the bit of the cut right here if you're doing a large step over. The second one is stress on the bit. Small step overs, 10%, 20%, the router bit is not taking off a lot of material, so there's not a lot of stress on the bit or deflection of the bit. Whereas if you have a very high step over, the router bit is trying to chunk out a lot of material and what happens as a result is the bit wants to push away or pull into the cut. So that's a larger deflection. When you're using a small step over, you're also getting a better finish on the edge of the cut 
and with a large step over, you get a rougher finish. Also, you want to use a small step over for your last cut if you need precision in the cut. Often in CNC machining metalworking, when you're working with really tight tolerances, you make your rough cuts and then you do your finish cut to exacting tolerances. And that little finish cut is a very small step over. One of the major factors when it comes to using a large step over versus a small step over is runtime. If you're using a small step over, then you're going to have a much longer runtime. Think of it like this. We have this bit, we're only going to have a 10% step over. It's going to come over, take that 10% off, come back, take another 10% off, just like that, and 10%, 10%, 10%, and it's going to have to segment like that. If we're doing a one inch bit like this, it's going to take 10 passes in order to remove all that material. Whereas if we have it set at 50% and we run across to 50% right there, we have one pass and then it comes back and makes the second 50% pass. So in this example, from going from a 10% step over to a 50% step over, we are literally running five times faster. So when you were removing material, you want to use a high step over. It's just when you get to the final cuts that you want to use a small step over. So this is the difference between step over, the pros and cons. When do you want to use a high step over and when do you want to use a low step over? You want to use a high step over when you're just removing a lot of material. As you see in this project right here, we are taking a lot of material off really fast with a very high step over and that is intended to save time. But we will come in behind that with a finish cut to get a nice clean edge or finish on the side of that project and remove any of the tool marks that were made by the fast moving high step over bit. Now there is one other case where we want to pay a lot of attention to step over and that's with ball nose bits. Let me show you on the whiteboard. The ball nose does not have a flat bottom on it. So step over becomes really important because of this. We have a ball nose bit right here and let's say we're going to use a 50% step over or half the diameter of the bit. So that next move will be like that and then like that and like that. So technically here's what we have. We have the bit moving into the material, moving over 50%, coming back, moving over again 50%, coming back after it moves over 50%. Now, if you take a look at the bottom of the material here and we come in with, and we remove the bit, now we've created a scallop type of look in the material basically like that because we're using such a high step over. So in, with ball nose bits, if we're doing work with it and you often do work in, with ball nose bits such as in molding tool paths or you're creating bowls, then you need to use a very low step over of maybe 5% or maybe even less, maybe a little bit more. But that little micro step over is just going to leave almost imperceptible scallop marks. Let me show you what it looks like on the machine. So here's an example of a three quarter inch ball nose with a 50% step over. Although it makes very few passes, you can see the scallop marks that ball nose bits will leave if you have high step over rates. And this one is very exaggerated, but with a ball nose, if you adjust it down to 5%, which this one is set at, then you can see it's cutting it nice and cleanly and the finish of the cut is nice and smooth, just the way I like it. Now, there are a couple of precautions I want to give you when it comes to step overs, and that has to do with excessively large step over and really tiny step over relative to the feeds and speeds that you're using for your CNC router bits. If you use a really small step over and you have a lower feed rate and maybe a high RPM, that bit is doing more rubbing on the material as it's moving through there than it is cutting. And what that's causing is friction between the material and the bit. And that friction is creating heat. And if that heat cannot be dumped into a chip, then that heat is going to go into the router bit. Whenever you're cutting, you are doing work. And when you're doing work, work creates heat and that heat has to go somewhere. So we want to dump it into a chip. But if we're not creating chips, that heat is going to go into the router bit and it's going to dull up your CNC bit. So you want to keep in mind when and why you're using a small step over. But the other thing is when you're using excessively high step over, you can literally overload the bit 
because you're using such a high step over. The chips that are being created can actually pack into the bit before they have a chance to eject out of the bit, and that can cause stress, which could cause chatter, could break your CNC router bit. So you want to be careful about excessively high step over and very small step over. When it comes to CNC bits, each type of bit has a general rule of thumb that you want to use when you're setting up your step overs. So if you have an end mill, like this quarter inch down cut end mill from IDC Woodcraft, your general step over percentage, you want to make it about 40 to 60%. When you're using ball nose end mills, as I just demonstrated, you wanna go from maybe 5% to 10% of a step over. And then when you're using surfacing bits, these are where you want to use pretty high step overs, 60% to 80% step over. And finally, you have your V bit. V bits, you generally want to use a very small step over. Why do you want to even use a small step over in V bits or have a step over set up? Well, sometimes when you're doing lettering in your CNC projects, that V bit actually has to do some cleanup. And as it's doing that cleanup, it's got to move over just a little bit each time. And you want to get as flat of a surface as you can, but you're trying to get a flat surface with a very pointed bit. So a very small step over will remove most of the material instead of leaving a bunch of Vs, like little tiny Vs in the bottom of that V cut. Now there's a couple more things I want to share with you about step over. But first, if you're getting some value out of this video, then take a minute and give me a thumbs up especially if you like my little prop that I made on the CNC router to show you what step over is and how it works, then definitely give me that thumbs up. Also, if I missed something about step over, then please put that down in the comments for other people to learn from what you know. Now, what are the last couple of things that you need to know about step over? Well, first is you don't have to calculate step over. Your CNC router bit companies like IDC Woodcraft should provide to you the information so that you don't have to plug this into your database. For example, if you look at the IDC Woodcraft website right here, it says database downloads. You can go to this page, download the database, and the step over values will already be plugged into the database when you import it into your software. And the other reason that helps is because you get all the router bit data plugged in at one time and you don't have to do it manually or figure things out, especially if you're brand new. So that's the first of the last two things I want to share with you. And finally is some of the terminology that is out there when it comes to step over that relates to step over. So people don't just use step over as a word although it's the most common one, but there are other terms. So one is lateral step or lateral uh, increment, more of an engineering term. Other terms people use is, uh, or you'll find it in software, pass spacing, offset distance. We have uh, step distance, X, Y step over, raster spacing, scan line spacing, I've never heard of that in my engineering career, uh, horizontal step over. And you don't wanna confuse this with the term step down. Now step down is when the router bit's making its cut and then it needs to come down further to make a cut again. That's step down, so don't confuse it with that. Just remember that step over is a percentage of the router bit as it's making a pass and then it moves sideways and comes back. It's how much it moves over is the step over value. And you want to set your step overs based on the the averages or rules of thumb that are out there for end mills, surfacing bits, V bits, and ball nose bits. And that information will be down in the description of this video, along with some other information. Definitely go check it out. And I've got a couple downloads down there for you as well that are free that you will want to use. So with that, my friend, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, share, and I will talk to you in the next video. IDCwoodcraft.com.